So two years ago, the Las Vegas Raiders, they drafted Colton Miller with their first round pick, uh, and it made a lot of sense at the time. I mean, this is a, you know, a 6'9 guy who can move very well, uh, 330 pounds. So, you know, there's a lot of value in uh, drafting him, it would seem, and he had his ups and downs to say the least. I mean, in his rookie season, he led the league in most sacks given up, which is obviously not very good. Uh, and this past season, he was better. He only gave up seven sacks compared to the 16 he gave up, uh, but still a bit on the high side. It was tied for 10th most sacks given up. So, uh, you know, the sacks have been a problem throughout his career, but he also definitely improved greatly from year one to year two. And I also felt like he improved a lot sort of at the midway point. He kind of was uh, very hit or miss early on, and he ha I think he got a lot more consistent as the season went on, and so I kind of wanted to see why that happened, and what really went into it, was there an actual shift, or was it just coincidence, and I think there was something, and I think I found something, so uh, first I'll explain what went wrong on certain plays, and we'll start things off with this play. He's the left tackle, and so he has a one-on-one -on -one matchup right here, uh, and so What's going to happen right when this ball is snapped is that you notice that his assigned man, the Minnesota Vikings player right there, he's going to basically almost fake as though he's going to be doing a bull rush where he sticks one hand out. He's going to kind of fake as though he's going to try to overpower Miller right here. That's what he wants Miller to think. And if you look at Miller, look at how far over he is. I mean, he is fully expecting this to, uh, you know, be something where it's going to be power. I mean, his his feet are basically completely parallel with the hash marks. I mean, that's how... Uh, far over he's turned and also he's very far away from the guard as well so he's in position here to you know try to use his strength to his advantage but the problem is that's not what's happening right here it's actually going to be a spin move and watch how well it works out for Minnesota I mean in fairness Carr did a very good job of you know realizing it and getting out of the, uh, that situation uh, Carr actually one of the more underrated things, I haven't talked about it, even though I've literally made a two-hour video on Derek Carr, but I still didn't talk about it too much. He does a pretty good job of knowing there's pressure from his blind side. That's kind of an underrated thing. So, anyways, that's not really that important. Uh, you know, a mistake by Miller. You know, he definitely got fooled a little bit right there. He got himself in position thinking it's going to be one thing, and then when it ended up being the other thing, he wasn't able to fully come back. This plays another example where, again, it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup, this time on the left side of the screen because the camera angle has switched. But what's going to happen is that right when the ball is snapped, you notice that, again, Miller, he's getting over to, you know, pretty far outside. I mean, especially with uh, there being a double team with the left guard and center. Now, you know, there's a huge gap in between Miller and the guards. So uh, this is already, you know, an interesting situation. But you also notice how he's so far bent forward trying to make sure that he, again, uses his power. He wants to use his power here. But, you know, there's disadvantages with being 6'9 as well. For one thing, you'll get a lot of 69 jokes. But the other thing is that, you know, if you're tall, you don't have as low of a center of uh, balance. And so this now allows a Minnesota Vikings player to sort of easily get lower just because you're going to naturally be lower. You're already lower to the ground. And then what he can do is he can kind of just push off the Miller side a little bit. And just getting by him like that, that's all he had to do because there was a ton of space in between him and in between the guards. So he just had to get off a little bit, and that's what he was able to do when he gets the sack to Carr. I personally think that's where Miller struggles the most. He struggles on giving up pressure to the inside, which is something that, you know, a lot of tackles don't really even work on too much. So it kind of makes some sense that that could be his biggest weakness. Uh, but what, what's really interesting, I think, about the Raiders is that uh, they definitely did do some sort of conscious shift here. They had a, a very interesting shift. Like, what's going to happen on this play is Miller is going to be going up one-on-one -on -one against Josh Allen. So, you know, Josh Allen, I mean, really tremendous player. He had a great rookie season last year. Probably should have been in, at least in contention for winning defensive uh, rookie of the year. He definitely should have been in contention for it. Uh, more so than he was, I think. Um, I think he uh, probably played as good as Boza did last year. And, of course, uh, I think Crosby. Honestly, you could argue either one. But my point is is that he's a very good player. And what makes Josh Allen so great? What's his biggest bread and butter? It's his speed. He likes to get to the outside. And so Miller, someone who we've seen in the past, was doing a, a you know making a conscious effort to get to the outside and be able to try and make a block. Uh, so you would think that he would definitely do it here against Allen because Allen al always likes to run to the outside and get around a tackle. But instead, 
watch how patient he is and watch how he kind of lets Allen come to him. So yes, Miller does end up kind of where he had been in previous plays where he's, again, his feet are pretty much parallel to the hash marks. Uh, It took a second and a half to get here, which is already, you know, oftentimes with Derek Carr, that's that that can be as all he needs is a second and a half. But more importantly, now for Allen, someone who likes to use his speed, he still hasn't been able to get around Miller. Miller actually can, you know, he has very good lateral movement. That's one of the better things about him. So it's kind of like, hey, don't get yourself into trouble by trying to get to the outside too quickly. If they're going to the outside, then you just trust yourself that you can get there. Because even though Allen actually has better positioning right here, you know, he can easily try to push forward. For Miller, all he has to do is he doesn't have to stop Allen here. All he has to do is slow him down. And one of the best ways to do that is to push him past Carr, which is what he's going to do. Eventually, Allen makes a spin move and Carr does get sacked. And, you know, it, he, he wasn't sacked by Allen, but he would have been sacked by Allen had that play gone on for a little bit longer. But that's kind of the whole point is that, yes, this kind of strategy can result in sacks. It absolutely can. But The idea is that you're not going to be giving up those sacks that happen in one or one and a half seconds. Instead, you're going to be giving up sacks that happen in three and a half seconds, which, you know, maybe four seconds, which honestly isn't that big of a deal because for the Raiders, they get the ball out so quickly. There's very few plays that even last that long. So when you're giving up the kind of, you know, not all sacks are the same. If you give up a sack that was, you know, four seconds long, that's not really that bad of a play compared to a sack where, It was only, you know, one and a half or two seconds, which we have seen Miller give up. So even if there is, you know, more, maybe not even more, but uh, the same amount of sacks, it's not as big of a deal because you're not having these disastrous plays. Most of these sacks are coming because Carr wanted something to be open. It wasn't, and he just didn't get rid of the ball quick enough. But like, watch, this is a textbook example where he's going up one-on-one, and again, he's going to just sort of allow that New York player to run to him. He's not going... To the, he's not running out. He's not stepping to the outside. He totally lets him come to him. And, you know, you, we saw how far apart he was from, uh, you know, his left guard in previous plays. Well, on this play, I mean, look at how close they are. They could high five right now if they wanted to. Uh, of course, you would think, well, this is going to make it very easy to get, you know, around him, right? All you have to do is sort of just push to the side. Uh, you can, you should be able to make something work. But the thing is, is that while he does that, Carr can simply just step up in a pocket. The only reason there was so much pressure there for Carr was because there was a blitz. I mean, he would have been much, he would have had a much easier time stepping up into the pocket right there. Uh, you have to figure uh, having Hudson helps with that. But, uh, you know, just the fact that he has uh, an ability, Carr can step up in a pocket like that, it makes things pretty easy. And especially because now for Carr, especially sort of down a stretch the past couple of games, he pretty much knew where the pressure was coming if it was going to come to the left side. He knew it would be coming sort of basically at his back, which, okay, that's not exactly where you want pressure to come. But at the same time, at least you kind of have an idea on most plays where pressure could come. And you have an idea of about how long you have on each play. I also should mention that obviously I am oversimplifying to some degree, right? I mean, of course, it's not like he just was always uh, doing this now and he never changed. Of course, that's not how football works. You're going to play lots of different positions and, you know, do lots of different techniques throughout the game no matter what. But it was just more of a conscious effort to do this type of thing. And once he can do that, it kind of opens up the playbook for him to some degree as well. Like a play like this, he's going up against a Tennessee Titans player. Uh, He's on the right side of the screen. And notice how he just moves a little bit over now. And this is kind of the sweet spot right here for Miller. Because now, for his assigned man, he could try to get to the inside. But for Miller, he has space. He can get back there. He would easily be able to make that block. And not only that, but that would be giving up containment. So you can't really get too far uh, to the inside if you're an edge rusher here. But also now, Miller is far enough to the outside as well that you can't really get around him. I mean... Really, the move at this point is to try and bull rush him, but again, the guy's 6'9". He has a bigger wingspan than you. It's not going to be very easy to, uh, you know, push him backwards. It's just not really a great idea, and, you know, you see, I mean, he basically just gives up on that play and says, okay, you know, no need to tire myself out for a play that's never going to work anyways. So, uh, again, I think that's really where Miller has been uh, shining when he plays well. You know, consistency is still a problem for him. I still think that he can struggle against the elite edge rushers, but a large part of why he's been more consistent is just 
that positioning right at the start. It's just knowing how far to step to the outside uh, and, you know, knowing what your strengths are. Knowing, hey, if you have good lateral movement and you're 6'9", maybe don't worry too much about trying to get to the outside so quickly. Yeah, maybe occasionally someone will beat you that way, but more often than not, you're getting beat to the inside or you're getting beat uh, because you're uh, screwing something up due to positioning. So him staying a little bit closer to the inside, it's really worked out, I think, in a big way for the Raiders, and I expect it to continue working out. So that's kind of what I wanted to make this video on. I was originally just going to make it a traditional breakdown, but as I noticed this kind of shift, I figured this would be a more interesting video. I suppose I can give my thoughts on him overall as a player. I think he's now a pretty good pass blocker, especially with this shift. And also, I think that uh, run blocking, it's fine. It's he's He's nothing crazy, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, a left tackle's job is much more to pass block than to uh, run block, and to have one of the best run blocking, if not the best run blocking tackle in the league, in Trent Brown on the other side, so definitely not a big deal, and he's not bad at run blocking, he's just kind of fine at run blocking, and I would say he's good at pass protection, which is a, a huge upgrade from his rookie season, I think we can all agree on that, so yeah, that's what I think, let me know what you guys think about Colton Miller in the comments below, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.